Okay, my wonderful, wonderful friends, this is Roger Spur Mud Fossil University, which I started because I discovered mud fossils and academia refused to engage, so I decided, well, the only way to do this is to do it. <laughs> now, I had DNA analysis done, PCR DNA, done from three different specimens back in seven, uh, uh, July of... Um, 2015. And, uh, and they all came back as human mitochondrial DNA. And one of them was this lung, which is a human lung. And I, took, I drilled a hole down in here, I believe right down in there somewhere. This goes back quite a few years. And, um, and it's red blood that comes out. I mean, it, it, there is literal blood in these. Now, I'm going to try to do um, this presentation in more of a clinical sort of way. Uh, I have to admit, I, I am, this is a raw subject for me because it's been so long, it's been 10 years that uh, I've been trying to present this evidence and academia has refused to engage. Not that, it's, it's, that I'm wrong, they just won't look at it so that, that nobody will ever see this. And in the mainstream, I have been put on spam lists and all kinds of things because I am going against what everybody wants to be heard i'm i'm showing evidence and they can't they can't go against the evidence because it's, it's they can't support any kind of um defense against what i have presented so they have silenced me now um graham hancock i'm going to show you in a second he really he understands this 100 percent fully because he is not silenced because he wrote a book that was very well received but they tried to crush him just the way they did velikovsky and exactly the way they're doing me i've never been able to get above the radar so i've just never i just ignored but i have more evidence than anybody in the entire world has ever had to support this side of our origin. Now this is the largest specimen I have on my own, my own property here. And this is the fingernail. And that's the little bumper pad that bumps up into your other bone that it, it sort of has to rock on. Blood supplies, fingernail, the size of it, that's a foot, that's two feet plus. I think it's about three feet long right in that area. Um, and again, that's the fingernail. And don't forget, these, these bones, I, I've got them coming out of my ears, but people always, well, that's just a rock. No, it's not. And I understand the ligaments, I understand the bone foramen, I understand where the marrow was, I understand the, this wrapping, which they used to call tunica. You see that little crease there and a crease there? It literally is, when it grows, it wraps right around, and it seals itself on these, these little ridges there. They look like a crescent roll wrapped up and tightened up. They called it the tunica, the ancient Greeks. And um, there's ligament attachments and all these little tiny holes in there. And a ball fits in there. It has all these balls sticking out of it. And, and it can't pull out of the socket. Well, that's one side. And here's the fingerprints. I think I showed you the fingerprints in the microscope. But here they are. Uh, here we go. All right, there they are right there. That's what I showed you before. My finger is about the same width as one ridge, one of these ridges on your fingertip. Now, the peel off, I think I showed you how thick it was. So maybe, I don't know, that thick, something like that. And that is really the skin, and it's the same skin as you have on yours. And it peels off just like a mat like that. It's just amazing. And I have another one here. Hold on, let me show you my other hand, and which was also DNA certify and here this one here this is three feet wide this particular hand and that um i have the fingertips and a whole batch of stuff from here but here's the grip skin on this one you see that silvery looking stuff see it peeling right off that's the same stuff now of course it's not as thick as it is on that other one but this is only three feet wide and the other fingertip is three feet long so and i have uh hold on there it is oh and this was DNA tested also a human, and that's one of the fingertips from it. I have knuckles and I have all kinds of things. CAT scan, DNA tested, anatomist verified, pads of the hand, apical tuft, 
veins and arteries. That's one on here. It is this one I broke off to see if you could see anything. But because of nucleophilic invasion, you don't see a lot. That's the problem. When, it, when they're in a mud state like this, they call it mud rock. And it is not really distinguishable as, as, as a, you know, it's very hard to find the actual blood vessels when they turn into mud rock because this is almost like blood. It really was saturated in blood and, and bloody fleshy tissues. That's why it turned this way. Other ones don't always, always turn that way. It depends on what, you know, the, the, you know what invaded it. It's, it's as simple as that. What conditions were in it? And I, I've made my own mud fossils. And, and I, I kind of understand now, if it was near a kidney, you're going to have saltiness, let's say. If it was near bile, you're going to have that kind of acidic bile juices. If it was near a stomach, same thing, but acids. It, 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 intestines, you're going to have something else. Heart, it's going to be all blood. Lungs, all blood. So it depends. If the guy died with his hand on his chest, you might get this. I don't know. It's all conditioned. And how much water was there? And what's the pH of the water? Is it really salty or is it not quite as salty? That it leads to extreme amounts of invasion. It's salty because you're on both sides of the periodic chart. NaCl. That is leads your transition metals in the center to go any way they want real easily. You got seven over here, one over here. You're jumping back and forth, and that's why salt is an excellent preserver because it goes in and it helps to invade the tissue if it's done the right way. Anyway, that's uh, there's there's a lot to this. It's not simple just looking at it and say, well, that's a something, that's something else. Because I see people all the time. Well, let me show you something. I, uh, here, I got one right here. People would tell me that's a guy's head. Oh, that's a that's an ant head or something, you know. That's nothing. That's a bone. That's a bone head. That's where the bone foramen are. It's not a guy's face or smiley face or anything like that. But they that's what people see in these things, but they don't understand the intricacy of how bones work and uh, and what to look for and what a bone foramen is. So anyway, there's a lot to this. I'm not putting anybody down for not understanding what they see. I am just saying don't immediately jump to the fact that you see one little angle and it looks like, because I see this all day long. And it's, a, you know, I don't want to discourage people, but I, I you know, I, they take offense, you know, when you say, geez, I'm sorry, that's not what you're thinking. Oh, no, no, you got to look at it from this way, look at it, you know. So we need to finally get this known by a wide audience. And then we can have little, you know, groups can get together and examine their things and talk about it and sit down and look at it and, you know, use your little microscopes and things. And, you know, just, you know, you, 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 it's, it's a group project at this point because nobody knows anything about this. Nobody knows anything about it. So right now it's just I'm being ridiculed um, basically in academia, but the average guy on the street says, "Yeah, absolutely, I see that. You know, there's no question. You're right." And you got the CAT scans, you got DNA, you got anatomists, you got specimens, you got all these things done. You know the chemistry, you understand nucleophilic substitution, invasion, and now I've also gone beyond that to to understand the problem they had, understanding this process completely because they missed the transition metal metal complexes and ligand attachments that that really are the things that float the particles back and forth to keep you alive there's a little ligand, a little pinch pinch and it holds it and goes over and says you want that? he says yeah well you're going to have to give me two electrons I'll give you this and he says okay here they go get it done and and they just bounce back and forth while you're alive. When you're dead, instead of them attaching and detaching, they say, "Woo, I got to find somebody to stabilize with." And the salts and so forth said, "Well, I can help you. I'll, I'll I'll bring some other guys over and I'll push some over that way and push some this way, and then you'll be okay. Just hug up to them, and after you dry out, you'll be a stone." How's that? And they say, "Ooh, that sounds good." And that's what happens. You see that? That's the lung that I have right here. And I had that, uh, I have another lung here, this blood literally ran out of it on the counter because the pleura was gone. It's still encapsulated in mud, but for some reason the pleura was eaten away. And you can see these the, the, the little alveoli holes, these are all, where all the air goes in your, in your lung. And this side was down, 
so the blood ran down into this area and it's filled in here with silicates. I fully understand this, I 100% understand the process now. No mysteries whatsoever anymore. And the people that are still hiding from the truth should be getting in trouble for this because you can't, you can't go teaching people stuff and be act as their fiduciary which means that you're trying to prepare them for a good financial future and which really you set them up for looking like clowns because what they did is end up paying you to teach them something that was only your own opinion and it was wrong you knew it was wrong and still continue to do that so what are these people going to do now they had whatever they learned was just absolute nonsense so they have to start all over again. Who's going to take care of that for them? I, if I was a student, I think I would find a way to, to get reimbursed for some of this. I mean, it's just not right. Maybe that maybe that's just my opinion, but I, that's how I would feel. I didn't pay for anybody to teach me something that they knew was wrong, or they should have known. There's no level of incompetence that could account for denying DNA and CAT scans and evidence and specimens and blood and chemistry and recreated the process. I mean, this is absolute 100% denial. All right, this is Derek Briggs. I know I sounded a little, you know, caustic, but I feel caustic, especially towards him, because he just literally destroyed my research. Now, he is supposed to be the top guy in Fantastic Fossils, and if you can't get him to even talk to you, nobody will talk to you. And that's what happened, because I will show you, I talked to people at Harvard, they said the same thing, if they won't talk to you, we won't talk to you. I talked to people at, um, well, I actually went to school at uh, Johns Hopkins, I took a course there, genetics. And uh, he said, said the same thing. No, we're not, you know, you're just a crazy guy, and that's it. And here's what he has to say. And here's what happens. They go in and they say, you write down what I tell you to say, and then I'll pass you. And, he, and this, he, where do you hear what he has to say? It almost proves it what, right out of his own mouth. Oh, great. Here. Well, it's wonderful to be in front of an audience so early in the morning that responds when you say good morning because I've often talked to audiences and you say good morning and they all write it down which is a little that's exactly what happens if they don't write down and repeat specifically parrot exactly what he tells them to say he will fail them and he's not in my mind unless you Derek will submit to scientific examination of something that has DNA, CAT scans, specimens, blood, everything now is, is totally in the open and you're still running away from it be, for your own personal interest. Now, I would, if I was a student, I would have a very hard time with this. I think I would find some legal issue to deal with this because um, you're literally forcing them to pay you to become highly educated in in a field that they want to to go into in a truthful way but all they have, all you say is you say what i say and i will i will let you go into that field and you will be accepted which to me that's not all it is is indoctrination now i'm i and i'm gonna go i'm gonna tell a lot of names today i don't care anymore is Derek briggs and he's the one that really crushed my research because I went to him with all of my evidence and he refused it and and I said well what would I have to do to prove it oh you'd have to have CAT scan you have to have this and I did and the, the result of that was to go to the lab that he said to go to they were really nasty it was the University of Texas in Austin to do the DNA I mean to do the CAT scans and he's the one that said they're the ones we use I said okay well, I'll have it done uh, we went down there and it was just a nightmare and, and they would not even I, I tried to call and ask one question, refused. I got kind of ugly about it. I kept sending emails saying over and over. Finally, the police and the uh, lawyers called me and said, don't bother these people again. You're threatening, you're doing this and that. I said, I'm not threatening anybody. I just want an answer. I, wouldn't you expect one answer after you paid 1500 bucks for a CAT scan? To be able to say one thing to somebody? And it, I know that I was told right away, we're not going to scan it, we're not going to do this. I said, yes, you are. You're supposed to be scientists. You're the ones that are supposed to do this. And that, that, it, it turned into a battle just to get them to scan it.
And then it turned into a legal issue, and I, finally I said, well, that's, well, what can I do? I'm fighting the biggest people in the world. So, Derek Briggs, you should now know that there's no question whatsoever we can test it and prove that it's 100% truth. Because I was the first one literally in the world to get DNA samples done because you refused to do anything. And then I did all the research that you should have done, sir, and are being paid to do by the students that trust you and you are their fiduciary. This is what really rubs me raw for this many years, 10 years almost now, of t total denial of reality and, and still you know, spouting off like you're a big shot knowing what you're doing. And uh, I don't see that at all I, here. I, I, there's a lot of words I could use that I won't for legal reasons, but I think they all apply and they are all true. I'll show you what I submitted to all these guys, but I figured, well, I'll go to Harvard and see what they have to say about it. And I got a hold of this guy, David Reich, and um, I talked to him, and we talked for quite a while. He was nice, and he talked, and he listened to me, and he said, well, what about this, and what about that? And I kept saying everything, and he kept, finally he said to me, and I, I swear this is his exact words, he said, everything you said makes sense, but if you'd have read the books I read, you wouldn't be saying that. <laughs> and that was it for him. All right? Professor Reich, if, if I was wrong, if I said something that isn't true, contact me. Let's talk about it and find out if I was wrong or if I was right. Because I did say the things that were true, and, you know, they just refused by people like you and like Derek Briggs and like the, my professor that I had at uh, Johns Hopkins. Um, what's his name? Sal Salzburg, I think it was. Hold on. Yeah, it's uh, Steven Salzberg. I, he's a, a professor, in, in, and I, this was at um, Johns Hopkins, and uh, he was doing a genomics class, and he was suppo he's supposed to be the real big shot in ancient genome DNA, and I had the DNA test, and I had all that stuff done, and he was my professor. I took these courses. I take a lot of courses through... Um, Coursera. You don't have to pay for them. You just get to go to them. And I go to them to sort of confront the teachers. And so far, I mean, it's been just nothing but confrontation. No interest whatsoever. I sent him all, this was after several weeks of going back and forth talking about his research. And he was quite proud of all the things he had to say. I, that's the interpretation I got. And all of his genomic understanding of how this and that happened. Well, that was fine. And I liked it. It was very good. It was enlightening. And then I said, would you take a look at what I have? I have some DNA st stuff and I have some samples and I have, oh, I have sent them all, you know, I don't know, five or six or seven years of research. And within eight minutes, I got a, a very caustic reply that how could I think that I have any idea of what I'm doing and this is all insane and I would you know basically that's eight minutes by the time I sent him something that he sent back saying that I was crazy so Professor Salzberg if you think I'm crazy I think you should start to do a little science and do some research if that's what you do I didn't see that 